Later developments in opiate products, uh, morphine, which is an alkaloid of, more, uh, of opium, I'm sorry, uh, more potent than simply eating opium. Uh, morphine itself uh, was isolated chemically in 1804. Uh, it didn't come into general use really until after the introduction of the hypodermic syringe in 1857. Uh, so morphine was used much more um, for um, uh, injection into the muscle or under the skin. Uh, not so much uh, until later on was it injected directly into the bloodstream, um, into a vein. Uh, but the advantage of um, morphine uh, is particularly when it's, it's injected hypodermically uh, is that the action of it's very rapid. It goes right into your bloodstream, you know, right to your brain. Um, and it's more potent than eating opium or taking it um, in the form of, of laudanum. Uh, so it's, it's both more rapid and more potent, and it was um, a real boon uh, for doctors, uh, surgeons, peop uh, for people uh, recuperating from wounds post-operatively, um, and so on. So morphine becomes um, the opiate of choice, really, for medical treatment. Uh, again, for a variety of illnesses, not just uh, sort of catastrophic illnesses and, and surgical um, wounds, but also for um, menstrual cramps, uh, headaches, other sorts of things. So it was prescribed quite commonly um, later in the 19th century. It's not until roughly the 1870s that um, hypodermic syringes really become common. Uh, although they existed, for example, during the Civil War, um, there was not much use of them. They, ju they just didn't have that many of them. Um, so it's only in the, after the war that uh, that uh, injection of morphine becomes common. And it, it really was. Sometimes doctors would even leave the syringe with the patient so they could inject themselves. And this obviously is, um, is a dangerous thing, as they found. <laughs>